Hello everyone, my name is Marina. Welcome to the Learn and Create workshops. Today I'm going to talk about comprehensive literature reviews. A comprehensive literature review is a systematic, explicit, and reproducible method for identifying, evaluating, and synthesizing the existing body of completed and recorded work produced by researchers, scholars, and practitioners. The key concept is systematic. In this video, I borrowed a lot of concepts from systematic review, which is a highly valued type of evidence for clinical practices and public health policies. After the series of videos, you will be able to describe the types of reviews that will be appropriate for your research topic, describe the main stages of the review process, and select an appropriate framework to specify your research question. Literature reviews aim to summarize the critical points of current knowledge of a particular topic. A literature review can be a section in an article or an entire article by itself. When it is a section in an article, especially an introduction to a study, it is to demonstrate how a study fills a gap in a research or compare this study with other studies. When it is an entire article, in most cases, it is to organize and describe a topic or discuss uh, var uh, variables within an issue or problem. Scoping of many reviews aim to address an exploratory research question by mapping key concepts, types of evidence, and gaps in research related to a defined area or field. Here's how I see the difference between the two types of reviews. For literature reviews, they are good enough as an introduction to a study or a separate work, but they never describe their methods. If they do, they just briefly say, we search these databases. When getting to mapping or scoping reviews, you need to describe your methods. Unlike literature reviews and scoping or mapping reviews, systematic reviews is a research method that aims to answer questions by analyzing studies meeting a specified criteria. In other words, this research method will locate and summarize all variable evidence for a specific question in order to guide decisions and practices. Over the past decade, the number of systematic reviews published in medicine, psychology, and education has dramatically increased. Here are some key characteristics for systematic reviews. A systematic review should have an explicit reproducible methodology that aims to minimize publication bias. Publication bias occurs when results of published studies are systematically different from unpublished studies. That is to say, studies with significant results are more likely to be published than those with no significant results. A systematic review should contain clearly stated set of objectives with clearly defined eligibility criteria. When doing a systematic review, use a systematic search to identify all relevant studies and also conduct an assessment of the validity of the findings. Meta-analysis is optional in a systematic review, but many systematic reviews may contain meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is a, a statistic method to summarize the results of primary studies by combining data from all relevant studies, meta-analysis can provide a better estimate for something. For example, the effects of health care meta-analysis can also help investigating the consistency of evidence across studies, as well as exploring discrepancies across studies. If you are interested in doing meta-analysis, 
I would suggest you to talk to a statistician. The big idea I wish to deliver here is the rigor in different review types. Differs for literature reviews, as we mentioned earlier, they are good enough as an introduction to a study or a se separate work, but they never describe their methods. When getting to scoping or mapping reviews, you need to describe your methods. And then for systematic reviews, you need to do appraisal of studies. Let's look at some examples. A review of the last 10 years of literature on machine learning models for detection and diagnosis of cancer should be scoping a mapping review. The second one, as machine learning models are emerging, what does this mean for detection and diagnosis of cancer? When we compare this example with the previous example, it's more broad, so it could be a literature review. Then let's look at the third example assess the effectiveness of machine learning models for detection and diagnosis cancer. It's more likely to be systematic review compared to the other examples. Let's look at this set of examples. A review of uh, remediation methods for PCBs in school buildings, like a scoping and mapping review, a review of adverse human health effects of exposure to environmentally relevant PCB mixtures, still scoping and mapping review. To assess the effectiveness of PCB cleanup and disposal methods for environmentally relevant PCB mixtures, this should be systematic reviews. And these two examples, we can see that they use effectiveness as a keyword in the systematic reviews. This is the last set of examples. To assess the effectiveness of library instruction on students' scores on a standard test, this should be systematic review. As more universities strive to support open access efforts, what does this mean for students? This question is uh, very broad, so it could be a literature review. A review on the efficiency and safety of chloroquine for treatment of COVID-19. And this should be a systematic review. Now let's move on how to conduct a review. Conducting a rigorous review, especially a systematic review or scoping review, is not easy. Ideally, you would have to establish a team of three or more members. They are subject experts, a librarian, and a statistician if you plan to do meta-analysis. Before starting the project, get yourself familiar with citation management software and statistical software. As the entire project may take up to half a year or longer, it's important to think about the need of conducting a review, which type of review, whether it's feasible, depending on staffing, time, and any other available resources. This diagram indicates the main stages of the review process. We will specify a research question develop a protocol, search for studies, select studies, assess quality, extract data, synthesize the findings, and writing up a report. 
In the next two videos, I'm going to cover how to specify research questions, searching for studies, and writing up methods for reports, and provide some resources or tools for screening. Thank you for watching.